In this drawing, we're going to create our first basic corridor. While we're creating our first basic corridor, we're going to discuss baselines and regions that are associated with our corridor. We're also going to discuss how to add additional regions, split regions, and merge regions together. So to start with creating our corridor, we're going to navigate to the home tab of the ribbon bar and go to the create design area and drop down in corridors. We're going to select corridor. And when we select corridor, Civil 3D is going to prompt us to specify the information for our new corridor. So I am going to call this corridor dev core, and I'm going to not describe it. I'm going to leave it as a basic corridor style. If you wanted to define your style for your corridor, you can create a new one or edit them. It's the same as all of the other styles that we've discussed inside Civil 3D. We can move on to our baseline type. So our baseline type is either what we're used to expecting, which is an alignment and profile, and we would specify the alignment that we want associated with our corridor and the profile we want associated with our corridor. Or you can create a corridor without having an alignment and profile. You can just create a corridor based off of a feature line. Because a feature line has horizontal and vertical data inside of it, you only have to use a single line. So if you wanted to create a corridor off of a feature line, you would select the feature line button, then you would drop down, select the site that your feature line is inside of. I know we have some feature lines inside of grading. And then inside of your group that you've selected, inside of the site you've selected, you could drop down and select the feature line you want to build a corridor off of. Uh, this would be a simple way to create a easy corridor, something that maybe had a straight grade and not very many vertical curves. Um, but anytime you get into complex vertical curves, horizontal curvature, and the like, you're probably going to want to go ahead and go with an alignment and profile. It's much more robust design method than using feature lines. So I'm going to jump back to alignment and profile. I'm going to choose dev align and dev profile, and I'm going to go ahead and go to my assemblies and choose dev no target. Then I am going to go ahead and leave my set baseline and region parameters. We're going to talk about targets later, so I am not going to target anything. I'm not going to target any surfaces, and I'm going to go ahead and click OK. So inside of this baseline and region parameters for our dev core, we can set baseline information. We can set frequencies for how often we're going to place these corridor assemblies. And then we can set our targets inside of here. We're just going to right now deal with baselines and we're going to have a single baseline and then multiple regions. So what Civil 3D does is it categorizes these options inside of our baseline and region parameters as a hierarchical tree where we have baselines at the top and regions categorized underneath each individual baseline. So a, what a baseline does is it specifies what horizontal alignment you're going to be on and what vertical profile you're going to be on. And then everything underneath that is specified based on that information. Each region has its own specified assembly. And so you can have multiple assemblies inside of one single baseline. So inside of here, you can add additional baselines. You can set your frequencies and you can set your targets. We're going to talk about baselines and adding regions to them now. So to add a region to a baseline, you can right click on the baseline and select add region and it will add a region down below inside of this baseline. So it will choose a region name. You can choose the assembly you want to use. So if I wanted to use dev target or dev no target, I could choose dev no target and click OK. And then what you'll see here is that now I have two regions. I have a region going from 0 to 996.69. Then I have a 996.69 to 996.69. So what I would need to do is modify my baselines for creating a region that went from zero to somewhere in the middle of my alignment, and then from that same location at the end station of this region to the end of my alignment. Or you can also have a hole inside of your corridor for an additional baseline or an additional region that would use a different assembly. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to actually right click on this and remove region. And I'm going to hit apply and build our first basic corridor. And so when I hit apply, 
Civil 3D is going to tell me to rebuild my corridor. So I'm going to rebuild that corridor and I'm going to get some errors. And the errors I'm getting are because we haven't specified our targets yet. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and then check off on this window here. And what you'll see is we've created this new corridor. And if I go into Object Viewer, inside of my Object Viewer, you'll see that we have this roadway and it does drop off because we probably went too far out and we don't have an elevation specified here. So what we can do is we can now use grip edits and slide this in. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide this in here to this location right there. And then I am going to move my alignment or my corridor up inside of my alignment back up into here. And the reason I'm doing this is because like we could do in the baseline window, we can also add and split and modify regions from this creation window up here from our regular CAD drafting window. So if we have our corridor selected, we can go up into the modify region and we can split regions, add regions and merge regions. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to add a region and Civil 3D is going to say, specify the region start station or fill. So if I start a region in this location here and I go all the way down to my endpoint for my alignment, and then I choose my dev no target assembly and click OK, what Civil 3D is going to do is it's going to ask me if I want to start doing my target mapping. I'm going to just go ahead and click OK. I'll still get an error that I don't have my target set and I now have a hole. So what I could do now is Civil 3D is still prompting me to add additional regions. What I could do is I could specify, instead of a start station, I could specify a fill. And so if I hit F and hit enter, I can now fill in this hole that's here. And then I can set a different assembly type that I wanna use, or I can select my dev no target again. So if I go and select dev no target, and then I go in, it's gonna ask me to set my targets for my surface. And I'm gonna go ahead and not set that yet. And then we will go ahead and look at, now we have three regions. And if you are using the same information for all of your three regions, it's probably best to merge them. So if I wanted to merge all three of these regions together, I would choose merge regions. And then it says select a region to merge into. So I'm gonna merge into this region here and it says select a region to merge. I'm going to pick this region here and this region here and Civil 3D is going to take all three of those regions and merge it into one single region. If for some reason I didn't want to have all those merged and I needed to have another gap, what I could do is I could also choose split region and I could split my regions again and I could specify a region to split and then I can specify my, my location to split the region at. And then what Civil 3D will do is now I have two regions split at the location I have defined. 